So I am recording this presentation as well. Um, we'll, we'll send it over to the property in case anybody missed the training for today. So I hope everyone has their TiVo remote in hand. First, where we're gonna start, it's called the TiVo Central. So your TiVo Central should show like it shows in your home. It says watch TV, my shows, what to watch. You have the guide and you have the apps and games. So when you're in the comfort of your home and you're watching TV, there's a little silver button at the top of your remote. It has a little TV. That is what we call TiVo Central. The first category that comes on TiVo Central, it says watch TV. All this does is if you click that button, you're gonna go back to whatever you were currently watching. It takes you to live television. The second section of your TiVo Central is called My Shows. So anything that you record or you bookmark is going to show up under My Shows. The next, the next section, excuse me, is what to watch. So your TiVo is going to learn you. It's going to show you different programs that you watch on a daily basis, and it's going to give you ideas on, on what you view and also recommend to you what's popular in your area. So this is just a section that shows you what to watch. If you were to click on it and go into it, it's going to show you what's trending. It's going to show you different shows that you know are nominated or have, have won Emmys. It's going to show you what are some hit TV shows or movies. So these are just suggestions on what to watch. Anytime you're in a category of your TiVo, the easiest way to get back is using the back arrow. So if you're looking at your remote, right above where you adjust the volume is an arrow. That is your back arrow. So you always want to use that icon when you want to go back to your previous screen. At the bottom of what to watch, if you watch the same shows every day, it will start giving you recommendations. So if you're somebody that watches a lot of sports, it's gonna start showing and recommending different sports programs that you may be interested in. So TiVo wants to learn you and wants to customize your experience from your home. The next section is gonna be our guide. So you can access the guide two ways. You can access it via your remote, Right underneath your voice activation, it has like four little colorful dots. There's a guide button. You can also access the guide from here as well. So anytime you're navigating through something, whether it be the guide or the menu options, you simply select what you wanna view. Once it's highlighted, you press okay, and it's gonna open up that category. So since we're here, I wanna take a second to review the guide. So your guide is going to show you what's currently on. It will allow you to go approximately 13 days in the future. You can also go back as well. So a great feature that Bluestreams offers that many other uh, you know, providers do not offer, we have a service that is called Catch Up and Start Over. So anytime you're accessing your guide and you see this little green back arrow, that means that you are able to watch that program from the beginning. So I'm gonna give an example. Chicago PD, it came on at six o'clock. It is currently 614. So if you wanna catch up, you are simply able to click on it. You press the A, there's a yellow A on your remote right underneath the thumbs down button. And it is going to give you the option to start this program over. So even if you're 30, 45, even if you're 59 minutes in, as long as it has that green back arrow, you're able to start that program over from the beginning. So you see right now, I just restarted it, but I wanna go back to my live TV. I don't wanna watch it anymore or, I, or I'm done watching it. Next to your TiVo center at the top, there's a live TV button. Once you hit that live TV button, TV button it will take you back to live television. So there are two important buttons that you want to remember on your remote. Whenever you're in a section, whether it be the menu, your recordings, or the guide, and you want to go back, you use the back arrow. If you're stuck in your recordings or you're stuck in Netflix or you went to another section of your TV, if you hit the live TV button, it will always bring you back to live TV. 
So just to go over again, if you see that green arrow, that means that you can start that program over from the beginning. Another cool feature about this green arrow is I can go back in time. So these are programs that came on earlier today. You see, it's already 12 o'clock. I'm going back all the way to 6 a.m. this morning. I'm even going to go back to, to yesterday. So remember, today is Thursday. This program came on Blue Bloods no, uh, November the 2nd, which was yesterday. On the guide, you are able to go back 72 hours. So if your family member, your neighbor, anybody asks you, hey, did you see this movie or this documentary that came on three days ago? You're like, no. As long as it has a green arrow, you're able to go back in time 72 hours to watch that program. So just remember, when you see that green arrow, that means that you can start over from the beginning or you can watch it on from the past. Now you'll see a little red triangle and you'll say, what does that mean? It just means that yes, you're able to go back and watch it from the past, but you cannot record from the past. So that little red arrow was gonna tell you at the top, this show is not available to record. So just remember when you're home, you're able to navigate through your guide either 13 days in the future or 72 hours in the past. Okay, so I'm going to go back to our TiVo Central. Remember, we talked about watch TV is just taking you back to current television. My shows, which I'm going to talk about how you record, is going to house all of your recordings. What to watch, it just gives you suggestions on what's trending and what we recommend for you to watch. The guide is the same button on your remote. It gives you access to your guide. And then this is one of my favorite categories. It's called apps and games. So in this particular section of your TiVo, you have access to every single application that is available on the Google Play Store. What that means is if you have Pandora, if you have Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix, if you have NHL, whatever app you, you subscribe to on your cell phone or your tablet, you are also able to put it on your TiVo device and you're able to connect as well. So let me show you how to get you get back to it again. If you're watching live TV, you're gonna hit your TiVo central button at the top of your remote, and then you're gonna scroll over to apps and games. So just so you you know, we give you the access to the apps and games. You still have to pay your subscriber for them. And let me just show you how many applications are available. So Google Play Store is powered by Android. It gives you access to over 5,000 apps. You have Peacock, Tubi, Pluto TV. Um, if I scroll down, you have tons and tons of applications, YouTube, so I would challenge everyone to go in and see if there's anything that interests you that you would like to download. Understand that applications, some of them cost money. If it is free, it's going to tell you at the top that it is free. So you'll see in this category, they have free movies and TVs available to you for you to download. Also, if you subscribe to the channel, with your Bluestream service, you know, your basic cable, you also can access those applications as well. So for instance, like ABC, you'll get, uh, you will be able to get CNN if you want to watch TV on the go. But it doesn't stop there. They have music, Tidal, Pandora, karaoke. Uh, you can even download games for yourself or your grandkids. If you play solitary on your cell phone, as long as it's available in the app store, you're able to download it as well. So the point of TiVo is not to limit you. It doesn't want you to just watch TV. It wants you to have a full experience in your home. So I would challenge everyone tonight on the Zoom, when you're home, I'm go gonna do it one more time. If I'm watching live TV, I hit my central button at the top, that's silver. I scroll over using the arrows to apps and games and take a look. If you want Netflix and you pay for Netflix, it's going to ask you to sign in. So you're gonna sign in with your username and password and you're able to enjoy Netflix. Same thing with Disney Plus or Hulu or even Prime Video. But again, there are some free options as well. So I would challenge you to go under Google Play Store so that you can see what is available. So remember I said, if I'm in any category of my TiVo and I wanna go back, 
I'm going to hit my back arrow. Okay, so that brings me to the last screen that I was in. So we talked about the guide. We talked about apps and game. The next is on demand. And you can access on demand from here. You can also access on demand from your remote. There's a green on demand button. So on demand is standard, just like with Xfinity or AT&T, everyone gives you options for on demand. If you want to use on demand, you can navigate through it. It's going to show you different movies, section for kids, there's adult content. There's several different categories that you can view on demand. Please understand, you have a choice. If you purchase something from On Demand, if you want to purchase a movie, it's gonna tell you the cost in the right-hand corner, and it's gonna tell you how many days it's available for you to watch it. So this movie, for instance, it's $4, and you have it for two days. So what that means is we will, we will submit a charge of $4 to your Blue Stream bill in order for you to watch these movies. But before you go to On Demand and purchase any movies, I would recommend you go through the streaming services and see if you find something that interests you that could be free. So I'm gonna make it really easy for you. This is a search option. Here you have to type in the name of the show or movie that you wanna watch. For instance, if I wanted Golden Girls, I would have to type it in and then it would pop up based upon what I typed. So this is how it was before. With TiVo and Bluestream, we have made it simpler so that you don't have to type anything. So I'm gonna exit out of this. I'm gonna go back to live TV and I'm going to tell my remote what I want to see and view. So instead of saying to it, I want to, uh, I want it to go to a particular channel, I'm gonna give it a name and I want it to show me every single movie that this actor or actress is, is in. So how do you do that? You're going to press and release the four buttons right above the guide. So if you press it, release it, Bruce Willis. Okay, so by talking into your remote, you're asking it to search for different content. This one is searching for Bruce Willis and it's going to also show me every single movie that it can find that's either related to Bruce Willis or that Bruce Willis was on. So you no longer have to type for a certain movie or show or actor. You're able to speak directly into your remote and it will give you those options. But it, it doesn't just stop there. So I said Bruce Willis, I wanted to see everything that Bruce Willis was in. It gives me a full catalog of him. But what if I want something specific? If I wanted action movies or movies from the 1970s, all you have to do, I'm gonna go back to live TV. You're gonna press and release and speak into it once you see the dots load on the front of your screen. Action movies from the 1970s. Okay, and now it's going to show me every single action movie from the 1970s that we have available. And then you're able to navigate and pick a movie of your choice. So when you pick it, it also is going to give you a couple of options. For instance, let me just show you if you can look at the screen. Like Jaws, it came out in 1975. When I click on it, On the left hand of the screen, it says Blue Stream. But say, for instance, this movie was not available on Blue Stream. It's going to tell you where else you can find this movie, whether it be Netflix, Prime Video, Amazon, wherever it's available, it's going to highlight that and let you know. So again, you no longer have to manually search for anything. You can speak it directly into the remote. I have two more examples that I wanna show you. Say for instance, you wanna to go to a particular channel, you're able to speak that into your remote as well. Go to ABC. The TV is gonna automatically load and go to ABC. What if you want to launch Netflix? You can say that as well. Launch Netflix.
And there you have it. So again, I challenge everyone on the call tonight to also speak into your remote, tell it what you're looking for and the different features that you wanna find. So when you're stuck in any category, Netflix, Amazon, or you're in another section of your TV, you can hit live TV, it'll bring you back to live television. So while I am here, I do want to give you a demonstration. Not only do you are you able to speak into your remote about cable, you can also ask it for the weather, you can ask it trivial questions. I'm going to say, what time does Publix close? So the closest public to me, because I'm in Coral Springs, is the one on Sample Road. It gives me all the information about Publix. It tells me what times it's going to close and open. What if I wanted to know if I'm driving out of town, if there's any traffic? Is there traffic on 95? It's going to show me any movies or any highlights about it. I think I need to be more specific. Hold on a second. What can I ask it specifically? What restaurants are near here? Okay, so just to give you an example, and then I'm just going to ask it something random. Who won the Super Bowl in? 1980. Okay, so this is the closest that it found. I guess the Super Bowl wasn't in the 1980s. But the same way you would talk to Alexa or Siri is the same way that you're going to speak to your remote. And it will give you certain answers to any questions that you have, very similar to Alexa. Now, just bear in mind that it is all connected to Google. So whatever it displays on Google is the information that it's going to provide to you in your home. So three things I want everyone to try to look into this evening is the first, we wanna to try to go into your apps and games and see what other applications you can add to your TV. The second is we wanna use your voice command and search for different movies or TV shows, or even if you're wanting to ask it about the weather, eventually it, it starts to learn your pattern. It starts to learn your day. It starts to tell you different things about your area only when you command it to. So that is some things that we would wanna look at. So we went over everything that is in your TiVo Centro. This button is important because it gives you access to other features of your device. A couple other buttons I wanna talk about on your remote is the input button. So you wanna be wary of this button. I know it's close to your power. It's right underneath how you turn the TV on and off. Input is only when you want to change the input. If you have like a Roku or a Fire Stick or if you're, using a DVD player, anything like that, that's when you want to utilize your input. Aside from that, you do not need the input button at all. You have, of course, your volume up and down, your channel up and down. Those are the normal standard buttons on every remote. Under live TV, there's a little lowercase i. I stands for info. It's going to give you information about the TV program that you're watching. If the program can be restarted, in the right-hand corner of your TV, you'll see where it tells you, press the little A button and start over from the beginning. So that's kind of like a shortcut. So even though the news came on at six o'clock, it's 629, I was able to start it over from the beginning. Another thing that I does is I gives you the option to turn on and off subtitles. If you're someone that likes subtitles or closed captionings, you're able to scroll over to it and you can either turn it on and off by selecting it and pressing OK. So, subtitles on or off, and then when you just change the channel, it should automatically come on on your television. So these buttons are the same like it used to be on a DVD player. It allows you to play, rewind, fast forward, or pause the different shows. Now, these buttons only work while you're watching live television. 
Also, it will tell you if it's available when you're watching on demand or recording. So these are the same features that we're used to when we used to all watch VHS. You're able to pause, play, stop, rewind, or fast forward. Right. The other buttons at the bottom, it shows an on-demand button, a Netflix button. You have the back area. So you have two choices. You can type it in, you can use the channel up and down button, or you can use the voice feature and you can ask for it to turn to channel seven or turn to channel eight. So those are your options as well. Next to the zero on your remote, there is a button that says enter or last. This button is so that you can go between the last two programs you are watching. So if you're watching channel 29 and then you move over all the way to 132, you don't have to change the channel up and down. You're able to just hit your last button and it will automatically toggle between the two channels. So that is what you use enter or last for. So we basically went over all the main buttons on the remote. What I wanna get into, which is very important, is how to record. So recording, I know it sounds like a, a, a difficult issue, but it's not. First of all, you all have a DVR in your home. They come with a service. The great thing about our DVR is we save your recordings to a cloud. That means that if we ever have to come and change your equipment, you never have to lose your recordings will always be able to retrieve those. If you are watching TV, you have two choices that you can record. There is no limit on how many shows you're able to record at one time. You either will record while watching live television or you can record from the guide. So say for instance, I'm watching this movie or my family's watching this movie and we like the movie, but we have to step out. While you're watching it, you're gonna press the red dot. The red dot is right underneath the channel up and down next to the guide on your remote. So you're gonna press the red dot and it's gonna give you these options. It's gonna ask you, do you wanna record this movie or do you wanna bookmark this movie? Bookmarking is the same like it is on a computer. You're not gonna record it, but you're just gonna tell your TiVo, when this movie comes on again, I want you to alert me and give me more information about it. So again, I'm watching live TV. I'm stepping out, but I want to watch this movie. I want to finish it later. I'm going to hit my red button. It's already highlighted on record this movie. I'm going to press it and hit OK on my remote. It's going to ask me for some different features and options. Unless you want to start or stop your recording later times, you're, you do not have to change or alter any of these options. So I'm gonna press okay twice, and it's going to confirm to me that this movie is now scheduled to be recorded. So that was a movie. Let me just find a TV show so I can give you the same example. Here's, here's one. The news comes on every day at 6.30 on channel seven, and I always miss it because I have another show that I enjoy watching. While you're watching live TV, all you have to do is hit your red record button, and it's gonna give you two options. So when it's a movie, you can either record that movie or you can leave it as a bookmark. When it's a TV show, it gives you two options. You can record just this one episode or you can create what we call as a one pass. A one pass is you telling your TiVo, this show comes on every single day. And until I tell you to stop, I would like for you to record it every single day. If that is your choice, you need to scroll up and make sure you highlight where it says create a one pass for this series. Let me just give an example of a TV show that I like to watch. Okay, so let's look at this one. ABC World News Tonight with Dave Mirror. I'm watching it. I don't want to miss it. I like to watch the news. So I'm going to select create this one pass for this series. Once you press OK, it's going to give you some other options. So I just want to explain when you're doing a movie or when you're recording just one episode, you only have about three or four different options. 
it's a little bit different when you are recording a series. The reason for that is because there might be 10 episodes associated with this series. So you need to tell your TiVo when to stop recording, how long you want it to record and, and customize your different options. Anytime you want to record a series, I will recommend that you do recordings only. So let me just go to another example again. You're watching a show, the same show comes on every single day at the same time. You're gonna press your red record button. You're going to scroll up to where it says create a one pass and press okay. It's going to tell you recording and streaming videos. My recommendation is to using your right and left arrows, scroll over to where it says recordings only. And the reason for this is because a lot of shows are available on cable and then they're also available on Netflix, on Hulu, on Amazon Prime. If you leave it on recordings and streaming videos, it will record every single episode, no matter where it is. The only issue is that if you do not have Netflix or Amazon Prime or all of those streaming services, you won't be able to access those programs. So this is only for people that are watching like Blue Bloods or All in the Family or a show that they enjoy watching every single day. You want to change it and put it on recordings only. The other option is a lot of these shows have been on for a very long time. This particular show, Chicago, it has 10 different seasons. If you wanted to record every season, you can pick which season you want. If you want it to record the newest or the latest season, then you want to do new episodes only. So for your recordings, anybody that's doing a series recording, these will be my two recommendations. Put it on recordings only and make sure that it says new episodes only. You press OK twice and it's going to confirm your options. So this is how you record while you're watching live TV. You're just watching and you see a program that's interesting. As soon as it comes on, you press the record button and it's going to automatically record to your system. Again, you have two options, record it one time or record it the entire series. The other way that you can record is on the guide. So if your family member or your neighbor or anybody tells you, hey, there's a great show that's coming on tomorrow at six in the morning and you don't wanna have to get up to watch it, you can navigate through your guide. You just have to find the particular show and it's random. You get to pick it, whatever you want to view. So say you want to, you like sports and you want to watch Get Up. It comes on at 8, 8 a.m., but you don't want to wake up. You can set your recordings to do it for you. You just have to find the show that you want. Make sure you highlight it. Press your red button on your remote and it's going to give you the same two options. You can record just this one episode or you can create a one pass for this series. So I'm gonna record just the one episode. I don't need to make any adjustments or changes to the settings. I'm gonna press okay. And it's going to confirm to me that my recording is set up. Now say for instance, there's another show that comes on but I, I have to do something. I have a doctor's appointment and I don't wanna miss it. It's NBA TV today and it comes on at 3 p.m. I'm gonna highlight it, press my red record button. And this time you need to scroll up because I want it to record the same program every single day at the same time. But remember I mentioned to you, my recommendations for any series recording is you need to change it to recording only and either new episode or the current year so that you don't get a bunch of recordings from the past. Now. I want to give an example. If you're recording like a uh, award show or a championship, we all know that sometimes those can finish late. They don't always start or finish on time. You do have the option to record past the time. So if the show comes on at 3 p.m., but sometimes it goes in double overtime, you want to extend it. You do have that option. Also, if this is something that you wanna keep as long as possible, meaning you don't want it to auto delete after a couple of months, 
then you need to change the setting to as long as possible. If it's something that you don't care for, you know that you're gonna watch it now, you can leave it as space as needed. You don't have to make any changes. But one path allows you to customize your recordings depending on how long you wanna watch it and if you need to extend the start and stop time. So once you view your options and you declare that this is what you want, you simply press okay twice and it's going to tell you that a one pass has been created. Now, after you did all of those setups for your recordings, you're gonna go back to your TiVo Central, which is the button at the top of the remote. And then you're going to scroll over to where it says my shows. Now here's going to be every single thing that you either bookmark or you record it. When it has a little red dot, that means that it is currently on and being recorded at this time. If you don't see the red dot, that means that it was already recorded, could have been an hour ago, could have been yesterday, but it was previously recorded. Also, you see how some of these say one. That means that you just recorded one single episode of that. But this one says 10. That means this is a series recording, so it has multiple episodes. So it's very simple. If you wanna access it and view it, you simply highlight it, press okay. And it's going to give you the different the different episodes that you're able to access and watch. To delete a recording is very simple. So shortcuts, it's 10 episodes already here. And I watched all 10 or I don't need it. All you need to do is scroll up and down to the program that you want to go to. Underneath the seven on your remote is a clear button. You're going to hit that clear button and it's going to ask you what you would like to do. Do you wanna delete everything in this group? Do you wanna delete it and just get a bookmark where TiVo will tell you next time it comes on? Or do you wanna delete everything and stop it from recording anything in the future? So you will let you do the options. For this example, I don't want it to keep recording shortcuts. I want it to delete everything currently and I wanna stop watching the show. You simply highlight it and press okay it automatically deletes from your listing. Again, here's the example. You're gonna scroll up and down on the programs that you do not want it to have anymore in your shows. You're going to highlight and press clear and you're gonna delete everything in this group. It's very simple. Now say Young and the Restless, you only watched out of the 10, two of them. The delete is a little bit different. You have to manually go to the ones that you want to delete it if you do not want to delete in the whole group. So you see, you would delete one by one. Highlight it, scroll all the way over to the X and press OK. So that way you can delete everything that you watched previously and you still have ones available that you haven't watched yet. So again, if you want to delete an entire group, you're going to highlight and press clear. You pick which option you want. If you want to just delete everything in the group, you press OK, it's automatically removed. If there's more than one recording, you have to open it up and go one by one to delete it. Now, say you accidentally delete your wife's favorite cooking show or you deleted one of your famous award shows or your one of the championship ball games. You can go into recently deleted recordings. All you have to do is highlight it, press OK, and you're able to restore something that you already deleted. You simply highlight it again, press OK, and it's going to ask you, do you want to recover or undelete it? Hit OK. This show has now been recovered. Let me give you an example again. I deleted a bunch of things. I'm going to say, let him go. This this is a movie, I didn't like it, I recorded it. I'm gonna highlight it, plus clear, and it's automatically deleted. But then my friend said, oh, I wanted to watch it with you. Okay, I'm gonna go back to let him go, highlight it, press okay. And then it's gonna give me the option to undelete the recording. So again, there are two ways that you can record. You can record by watching live television, vision, you just hit the red record button, or you can also record from the guide by hitting the red record button. Anytime you want to access your recording, 
you're going to hit your TiVo Central button and scroll over to my shows. Also at the top, you see there's a time. It says six minutes and 47 or 647 is the time. Next to it says 22%. When I first went into my shows and I had all those recordings, I was at 36%. Once your TiVo gets to 100%, that means you have used 100% of your hours allowed to record. Two things are going to happen. TiVo is going to tell you, you don't have anything else, any more space. It's going to tell you that you need to recommend. You need to either, excuse me, upgrade to more storage, or you need to delete your recordings. The other option is it's also going to tell you, um, it's going to start deleting it in chronological order. So you see the bachelor started September the 20th, it will delete it first in order to continue recording your series recordings. I'm sorry, I'm muted. So I just wanted to go back. If there's something that you want to keep for a long time, you have to make sure that you change the settings to as long as possible. If not, it's going to delete your recordings in chronological order, because we want to ensure that you get all of your series recordings. And just as a reminder, please make sure you change it to recordings only and new episodes only or the latest year. Now there's programs that are canceled, like Seinfeld and other programs. Of course, there are no new episodes. What it's going to record is the newest episodes or the last season that was available. The reason why I tell you to do new episodes only or the current year is because if I start this from year one, it is going to start recording every single program from the first year that it came on. So it's very important that you customize your options once you look at it and you confirm that everything is good, you're going to press OK twice, and it's going to tell you that your recordings are saved. So we went over your TiVo Central, all of the different features of your TiVo. Everybody is going to try out apps and games. We talked about the input button on your remote. That is only used if you need to add a, um, like a fire stick or a streaming device to your actual TV. Anytime you're in a category of your TiVo, you can hit live TV. It will bring you back to live television. We talked about the recording options. You have two options. You can record from the guide or you can record from the actual um, live television. Netflix is just a one-click access. You still need to sign in. Even if you're using your kids or your daughter's login, you still need to sign in on every single television that you want to enjoy any of your streaming services on. When you're watching live TV and it gives you the option to start over, you can use the A button. The other buttons are really for you to customize different things, for instance, like your guide. If you don't want to see certain programs or shows, if you hit the, the red C, it will give you options to only show certain shows or make it favorites. So you're able to set up favorites, but the only caveat is once you change those settings, unless you change it back, it's only going to show the channel that you favorite. It's not going to show all your other programs. So right now I'm going to go through the chat and um, just answer a couple questions out loud. And then one by one, if you can please raise your hand, I will be glad to answer any questions that you have. 
I know you can't see me. And the reason for that is because the way that the camera is set up, I wouldn't be able to be on camera and show the actual screen. Um, so remember, A is for when you're watching live TV, you can start over. C is used for you to edit your guide so that it can only show channels that you might favorite or like. B and D really don't have a function at this time. Also, the up and down um, buttons on your remote, they used to be for you to like or dislike a show, but they are saying that TiVo are, is revamping those particular stations and those buttons on the remote. If you're having an issue or concern with your TV or your service, please leave us a comment in um, our chat and we'll go ahead and follow up with you. Someone asked me to repeat again, the difference between undelete and recover. It's the same. So again, when you're in your TiVo Central, you go to my shows, recently deleted is everything that you deleted, everything. It stays there. If you want to recover something, you press OK, and it's going to give you the option to undelete or recover. It's the same thing. And once you say yes, it also will give you the option to play it directly from that section. Thumbs up and thumbs down, I just went over. We don't currently use those. How do you set up the microphone? The technician should have set up your microphone when he came out. For instance, you shouldn't have to set that up. If you're having an issue, we need to send a technician back to your home. But you can say things like, go to channel two. That's gonna go to channel two. You can say, what's the weather? So this is the same kind of concept that if you have a, a Apple device or an Android device with Alexa or Siri, you're just able to speak into your remote to ask it any additional questions. So it is Google Assist. I'm gonna start with Michelle. She has a question. Good evening. Hi. Hello. I would I'd thank you for being here tonight and doing your service for our community um i kind of didn't get the a b c d functions and i would love to hear them and i also have a major problem and i don't know how many others i would like to get bloomberg tv and i don't know why we don't have that available to us we had that with xfinity and every hotel I go to has Bloomberg TV. And what can I do to repair that or remediate that? Thank you, sweetie. Yes, no problem. So remember A, anytime your channel, you're changing your channels up and down, you can press the letter A and it will start the program over if it's available. That's what okay. A is used for. B currently does not have a function at this time and neither does D. The C button on your remote is when you're in your guide, you're able to set up favorites and you can change your guide to only display like your favorites or all right. of the channels. It's just customization while you're in the guide. Now, and as far as- do we, do, do we do that while we're in the regular, I know how to do the back thing to get, to get it to be a favorite. So I think I'm okay on that but I don't seem to, I can't get my, like I can't get Amazon Prime on my favorites. Is that correct? No. So remember favorites is only cable TV. Amazon okay. Prime, we only give you the access for it, but no, it will not allow you to favorite it. It won't show up on your guide. The only way you can see it as a favorite, let me just go back and show you. If okay. you're in your TiVo Central, and you go over to apps and games. Once you go into it often, it's going to keep it here as my apps. 
Okay. Yes. So for easy access, but no, they don't allow you to save it as a favorite on your cable. Okay. Now, Bloomberg, so, we can. Okay. Um, thank you. No problem, Miss Michelle. So Bloomberg, we can, you know, put in a suggestion regarding that channel. At this time, I'm checking, and I do not see that we have that channel in our channel lineup. But there is an option that you can do. Let me just see if it's available here. Because the Google Play Store is not just going to show you what's available with Bluestream. It's going to give you other options as well. So if I go here, I go at the top under search. And you can speak to search here as well. Bloomberg. Or let me just go in. It's easier this way for me. It's going to show me if Bloomberg has an application as well. And I see that there is one, but no, it only has it as a business app with daily news. So Bloomberg, the actual network does not even have a streaming service. So this is the only Bloomberg that we have available. What we always do, we always want to be adding or removing channels. We will submit that to our product department and ask them if they can look into adding that to the channel lineup. All right, the next one is Rodrigo. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Quick question. When you do um, a recording for um, a specific channel, is there a way to specify um, if you want to just record the season for a specific sports um, team? Because um, I was struggling with recording the Miami Dolphins because I, I, I did the season for, um, but I guess it was, I was starting to record on a, on a Sunday night and it yeah. recorded all the Sunday nights instead of just uh, the Dolphins. How do I, how do I? That is a good question. So his question was, can you record just a specific team? The answer is no, because TiVo doesn't know the specifics of the team. The only thing that you can record specifically is a channel or a program. What you can do, um, Mr. Rodrigo, is under the apps and games, they do have different like NFL apps that you're able to download that will give you specifics on only the Miami Dolphins. You can look into an application, but when you're recording, it's gonna record a specific channel and um, network. So not okay. yet, but in the future, I hope that you know it will give you that option. Thank you. And um, I'm having a technical issue with my box. My, my TV flickers both for live TV and for recordings. Is that something that they just have to change the box or what, what how can it be fixed or just well, flickering sounds to me like there might be something regarding the signal so just to let you guys know that this our box is powered by the internet that's why every time you change the channel it's going to give you that circle that says loading video because it's an internet based system now if it's flickering because you can see here there's no flickering or there's no issue when i'm changing the channels which lets me to believe that it's not a network issue that could be particularly something in your actual home if you can please leave your information in the chat we can see about sending a technician to look into that okay perfect thank you so much okay thank you and andrew hello hello uh I'm having trouble uh, getting into the fast forward and rewind section. I know that when I hit the red button, mm -hmm. um, I, I can get into it, but what's the best way to get into that screen that shows the rewind and fast forward, that screen that you're just showing that? Okay, so there's a will in the middle of your remote. Every time you change channels, it's gonna give you that option. If you're watching a recording, let me give you an example. Let me go to a recording. You need to manually touch those options. And TiVo's gonna tell you if, it's, if it allows you to fast forward or rewind. So this is a program that was recorded. All you have to do on your remote is where it says play, pause, and stop. You just access it that way. 
If it doesn't auto populate, you hit those buttons and they should automatically appear on your screen. So just tell me that again. So okay. I hit. So you're going to your recordings, right? Yes. It's probably gonna disappear after a while. How yes. do you bring it back up? You press the play. Underneath the guide is the play button. You press that button. Yes. Yes. You press right, pop, right, I see. Fast forward or rewind. The play button. Okay. And when you want to go back to it, you pick play. When you want to rewind it, you're going to hit the two arrows that are going to the left. When you want to fast forward it, you're going to hit the two arrows that are going to the right. I when understand. You're in on demand or recording, or if you're watching live TV and those options go away, you simply just press it and it will bring it back. What do I use the yellow button for? That's pause, to pause it. See, look at the screen. So I'm watching live TV. I have to run to the kitchen really quick. I'm going to hit pause. And how do you stop it from pausing? You hit play when you come back, which is the button on top of it. And can I use the uh, rewind and fast forward on my remote instead of using it on the screen? When you use it on your remote, it pops up on the screen. I understand. Correct. So my recommendation, because it gets confusing when you're trying to do it on the remote, on the TV with the arrows, always use the second set of uh, wheel at the bottom with the yellow pause and push it from there. Okay, my wife has a, a, a question that was in the chat. Okay. And I'll just turn it over to her. Um, <clears throat> once the recordings have recorded, it shows up in my recordings. Where can you see what you've scheduled to record, say like in two days, but it hasn't recorded yet? So that's a good question. The only way that you're going to see that is if you go to the guide, if it's in the future, because it's not going to show here. It's going to show when it has officially recorded, unless it's recording while it's playing, you'll have the little red dot. But yes. if it's something that is scheduled like two, three days ago, you're not. The only way that you're going to be able to do that is if you go to the guide and you click on, like, let me just give an example. I'm going to set this recording for. One a.m. when I am sleeping. When you go back to that time frame, it's going to get, you see, there's an arrow, there's a check next to the TV. When there is one check, that indicates it's one episode. When there is- We can't, this is not, the check is not showing up on the screen here. On your, you can't see it in, oh, you probably can't see it. Well, so you're saying you've got Chicago PD highlighted, there should be a check beside it? At, at the one top, no, 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 where it says Chicago and it gives a description and you see a little TV, a prime video, that I, is, I see it. Oh, up there, up there. Yes. yes. So okay. it's going to have a single check for a single episode for a series It's going to have two check. How you okay. can also check is if you go to it, it's going to tell you to modify your one pass. That's going to tell you that you already have it set up. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No problem. Thank you. <clears throat> Eleanor? Okay. Oh, you, you have to unmute. Oh. Okay. okay, can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can hear okay. you. Okay. Uh, is there a timer on this, uh, TiVo? Let's say you uh, are watch. I'm asking this question for someone who couldn't be here. If you're watching TV and you're going to fall asleep, is there a timer that would shut off the TV that you could set to shut it off? So th there's a timer that you can put. It's like a, it's not that you can put it on. Your TV is going to ask you, are you still watching? The only way that you can do a sleep is from your actual TV. So it's just like Netflix. If you're watching it for an hour or two, a sign is gonna come up that says, are you still watching this program? Oh. If you don't respond to conserve power, it's going to automatically shut off. It's the same oh. concept if you have Netflix or other streaming services. If you want to set a timer for it to shut off at a certain time, that has to be done through the settings of the television. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'm gonna take two more um, 
people that have their hands up and then I'll address the questions in the chat. Give me a second. Yes, Ms. Sherry. You have to unmute. I don't know if she's there. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Yes. So, hi, I wanted to find out, um, I understand HBO Max is in our bulk TV package yes. and we have to download it. And can you just walk us through where that is? I saw that the HBO channels are standard in the guide, but not the Max. Correct. So Thank you. with HBO, you do get about eight channels that are in the actual guide. In order right. to access HBO Max, that is an application. So okay. if you go to your apps, you're going to see yep. HBO Max. And I'm okay, just I'm going to go in there. Yeah, and you're going to have to do it on your end. Disregard where it says $9.99 a month because you subscribe through it through your through your um, provider. So you're right. going to just go to install. Right. Now, here's the caveat. Just like you have Netflix Prime or if you had Xfinity or AT&T, you need to have credentials. You need to have a username and password. If you right. have not set up those credentials yet, I'm going to put a website in the chat. You yeah. need to go there, register with your right. account number. Yeah. And it's going to give you a username and password. With that username and password is how you're going to access HBO Max for free. Because here's so, what so, HBO Max, mm -hmm. so is that basically when you set up your account, you set up your username and password, the same thing. That's your credentials. Correct. If you've okay. already went to watch TV um, everywhere that I put in the chat, then you're good. Right. It's a username and password. So once right. you do that, you're going to scroll and it's going to tell you to sign in. When you're paying for it, you need to choose a plan. But when you're but we're not paying for it. So my question is, I'm in the apps now. I apologize if I I'm sound showing stupid. I'm everyone on the screen right now. Just one okay, second. I'm looking. You need to yep. scroll down to where it says sign in with your provider. Oh, under my apps and games, right? Okay, so let me go back. Okay, sorry. It's okay. All right. So I'm in live TV. I'm gonna oh, go I go to live TV, yep. I'm going to go to apps and games. Oh, yeah. Okay. Apps and games. Yeah. So that's under the TiVo button. Basically. Correct. Yeah. You go into HBO and Max. You need to install it. Oh, you have to install it. Okay. Yes. Yes. So where do you install it? You just. Once you go into apps and games and click yeah. on HBO Max is going to say install. You have to highlight install and press OK. Okay. And I, and I can use the voice command to say install HBO Max. No, Before. you can tell it's launch HBO Max, but it's not going to install it. You have to manually go in and install it. Let me gotcha. show you again on the screen. Okay. I already installed HBO Max, so I can't use that as an example, but let me show you. It's very simple. It shows you on the screen how to do it. So for instance, Disney Plus. Yeah. Oh, this might be installed already. Yeah. For some reason on mine, but it, it could be I, an outlier. I don't even see where I can highlight HBO Max. I don't even see it as an option. I see Disney Plus, Prime Video, YouTube, Netflix, all those things, Look at but I don't. For me, go down to the Google Play Store. Okay, the Google Play Store. Fine. Yeah, okay. I'm there. Yeah. There, scroll down to HBO Max. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Just give me one sec. Gotcha. Okay. Because I think I say HBO Max and it's going to say install. Right. Press OK and allow it to install. Okay. Once it finishes installing, it's going to tell you to open it. Yeah. I actually don't see the app. I don't want to take everybody's time, but okay. I think it's so probably it's appropriate if it's okay. If you guys can put second. some notes on this for us. Yes. Because I think it's going to affect everybody. I will get a job aid together that Adriana can send to the community. If you don't yes. see an app there, you just yes. need to type it in here and it will pop up. Okay, but if you can give us specific instructions, because I think that's going to impact a lot of people. Okay, we'll work Thank on you. the instructions. Yeah, so that would be really yes. great. And if you can email them to everyone or the office will. Thank you. Yes, I can do that as well. So Thank you. I want to let you know regarding the applications. You right. still have to go to the website in order to create the credentials, and we will right. send information on that as well. Right. So for right. time, I just want to go through a couple things. Yes, thank you. I 
see a couple people saying that the internet speed is buffering. If you can please leave your contact information in the chat, I will make sure to follow up with you. Yes, you are able to set up and arrange for them um, someone to come out to help with your microphone. We have a technical support department that's open 24 seven. Let me get the number for you and I'll leave it in the chat. Francisco, I believe you're gonna be the last question of the night for time. Yes, thank you very much. My question is related to the last uh, question is, can you please go through, but a, a little bit slower, how can we, where can we get our credentials to log in when we're traveling? Okay, so let me pull it up here. I'm going to... I'm gonna share something on the actual screen. Hold on one second. And what we'll do is we'll send this over to the property as well. Now, when you got installed, you got in your welcome kit, you should have had this information as well. It's called Watch TV Everywhere. Let me just share my screen and I'll show you how to access it. Okay. So this is the website. It is called watchtveverywhere.net. Can you see the screen? Stop sharing. Hold on one second. Let me reshare. Are you able to see my screen, um, Francisco? Uh, yes. Yes, I can see it. Okay. So this is the website. It is WTVE.net. It's the same that I put in the chat. Okay. Once you go to this website, you only have to do this one time. You're going to select Bluestream as your provider. It's going to ask you to register. You're going to put in your account number. Your account number probably looks like something like this. No um, digits or spaces in between. Okay. Sorry, I didn't get my welcome package, so I don't know what my account number is and all those details. Okay. Have you re received any statement? Uh, no, that I'm not aware, but okay. I, can, I can call the, the, the support number and ask for this information. That is correct. So you can call the dedicated number that I provide provide to you, they'll also be able to assist you with the Watch TV Everywhere as well. But for you, as an example, I'm going to put your information, and this is how you're going to have to fill it out in your home. You're going to use your account number, which we can provide, your last name, you're going to have to put your first name, and last name again. And then you're going to create an email. I'm just going to make up one right now. I'm not going to save it, but for the point of this exercise, okay. you're going to put an email. Whatever email you choose does not have to be any specific email. It could be Gmail, AOL, iCloud, whichever one you would like. You're then going to create a password. Once you do that, it's going to tell you to confirm your password. Whatever email and and password you create here is going to be your credentials. So that is what you're going to need to log into HBO Max, to log into the Bluestream app so that you can watch your shows on the go, on your tablet, on a fire stick, on your cell phone. Once you create these credentials, it's going to say submit. It does take 24 to 48 hours to activate. After that, you're set. You do not have to redo this or create credentials ever again as long as you're a Bluestream customer. Okay, and, to, and once I do that, to watch the Bluestream channels when I'm traveling, I have to log into this web page or it's a different web page? A... No, once you do that, you're going to go to the Bluestream app. And let me tell, show you what the Bluestream ah, okay. app looks like. 
So you're going to go to your Google Play Store, or if you have an Apple phone, or if you have an iPhone, or an a iPad, you're going to go into a blue your, screen app. Okay. And yes, I will log in with these details. Correct. Let me okay. just show you what it looks like. So you do have to create the credentials. You only have to do it one time. Once you create that login, this is how the Blue Stream app looks. You're still in the last uh, page in the web page. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. So we'll send an email over to the property so that everybody has this information. Let me reach share so I can show you what the Bluestream app looks like. So once you create these credentials, and it's the same that you will use for um, on demand as well, for on demand on the go, you have access to your full channel lineups. Can you still see my screen now? Yeah, now I can see it. Now I okay. can see it. This yeah. is how the Bluestream app looks. So that is what you would need to download. And when you go in and install it and you download, it's going to, so this is every single app that you put on your TV, you still have to install. Because remember, we only give you the access, the providers still require for you to download it. So just to give you an example, you're gonna download your Bluestream app to your, your tablet or a Fire Stick or your cell phone. Once it's done, it's gonna tell you to open. When you go to open, it's going to tell you to sign in. When you go to sign in, you're going to have to use your username and password that you created on that website. So okay. we'll send details and directions over and instructions. We do have the technical support number that I put into the chat. They are open 24 seven if you have any questions or concerns. So now that it's downloaded, I'm going to show like this. And then it's going to ask you to sign in with the same username and password that you created. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So if you do not have your account number, please contact us at that number. Uh, we will send over this website and the dedicated number to the property. This presentation was recorded, so I will also send this as well. Okay. So I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight from North Tower. Please look out your email for more information, and I hope that everyone has a great night.